Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. Sony disappoints again with this trailer for Craven. Nintendo hit hard with its latest Direct, and we might even make some time to talk about Secret Invasion. That's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning into to this episode of Caster's Guild. I am your Guildmaster, Rick Perry, and I am not a scroll. And I am your Guildmaster, Baron Kane, and I am the Super Scroll. I guess I should just stay away from you then, you know, because I'm not a scroll. You're the Super Scroll. It's. My left arm is plastic. Yeah. <laughs> Stretched like elastic. <laughs> so I think that's a good place to start tonight's episode. We've got episode one of Secret Invasion. Now, let me tell you, not only am I not going to watch the rest of it, I'm canceling my subscription to Disney Plus. Damn. Okay. Sounds like we've got some things to get off our chest here. Yeah. So, you know, I've literally brought up the writer's strike every episode since it started, right? Yeah. So the writer's strike, they are striking for equal pay, you know, for streaming and everything, blah, 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 blah. But then there's that one thing. That is, I will not, you know, they don't want them to use AI to mm-hmm. write their, their scripts and stuff. Fucking Disney slash Marvel literally used AI to do the opening sequence to Secret Invasion. Okay, so it didn't just look like AI. No, confirmed. They literally the used AI. Confirmed it. Huh. Yeah, the director confirmed it. And I didn't read it. So I don't know if he was, like, proud of it. Right. But yeah, confirmed. Okay. So I'm going to start this part of the discussion by laying out flat at the beginning. I agree with you. Right? But in order to make this discussion, we've got to play the other sides, right? So it's confirmed they use AI for the title sequence, but I'm assuming they didn't use it for any of the writing. I don't know. Right. See, that that's kind of my point. It's like, if they were... If they were, you know, so quick to use AI to do an opening sequence that should have gone to an artist, then who's to say they didn't use AI to do a fucking script or even parts of the script? Now, here's the other thing about not paying an artist. Did they not, though? Because, yeah, they could have just typed something into an AI. It pumped it out and they used it. But they also could have paid an artist to use the AI as a tool because they were looking for a particular visual style and that artist still got paid. If they had like a self-contained AI where this dude pumped in all of his art and used that AI to use his art to pump out that video, I might be okay with it. Right. I might be okay with it, but you got to really prove that shit to me. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, in that particular case, it's definitely more of a guilty until proven innocent. And you know they're not going to take the time to prove themselves innocent, because why would they? So, I'm reading off of the website MovieWeb, which is quoting Polygon. Just, I, you know, again, since it's credit, give it credit where credit's due. Secret Invasion director Ali Salim recently spoke to Polygon about the opening sequence and how it was created to be something pretending to be something else, just like the scrolls in the series. He explained... When we reached out to the AI vendors, that was part of it. It just came right out of the shape-shifting, scrawl world identity, you know? Who did this? Who is this? We would talk to them about ideas and themes and words, and then the computer would go off and do something. And then we would change it a little bit by using words, and it would change. So, yeah. I mean... So, depending on how that AI bot, depending what art that particular AI bot was fed, let's say, for example, this is like, for some reason, the most most ethical AI company in the world and they have paid every artist that that AI bot sources then maybe but like what are the chances of that see even I'm I'm reading I'm reading a tweet by MCU spat MCU spidey shots with this image of the end credits of secret invasion the debate of the intro should end it is made by designers who have used an AI with concept arts Neither art has been stolen nor jobs have been removed. 
Oh, wait. Well, I mean, that's true. If if they fed the AI concept art that Disney's artists made, and then that is what the AI spit out from well, that concept and that, art. And that's kind of what we were talking about. Yeah. If it was all from a specific artist. However. Because in, in my mind, that's a cool way to use AI. No. Yeah. 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 Again, if it's all from one guy. But I see no proof that it is. I see one thing that says concept by Felix Soletic. But that doesn't mean that it's the concept art. That just means that he came up with the concept of this opening intro. Right. There's an animator, but that doesn't mean that his art was used to do this. Right. There is a executive producer, design producer, there's creative lead. Again, doesn't mean his art was used. Art director, again... Does it mean his art was used? <sighs> I thought the article said, though, that the AI was fed concept art. I thought that's what you just said. Concept art of from who? I, I assume of the series. Right, yeah, right. Kind of a big assumption, saying. though, I guess. But who did it? I want to know. Like, it, they are not crediting them. That's my thing. Right. Oh, and then someone says, wrong. Ignoring how AI is even able to produce images... These are the credits for the Emmy-nominated Jessica Jones opening, with similarly, which similarly to Secret Invasion also uses illustrated visuals. Look at the illustrators, designers, and animators credited. Oh, okay. So, so I guess they're saying the difference is like the Jessica Jones opening credits its lead animators, its editors, its illustrators, its flame artists, director of photography, even the design intern. Right. You know what I mean? All the way down. And Secret Invasion doesn't have all those credits because it didn't have all those people involved. Right. And and, and, and let me tell you, again, if they come out and, and again, prove to me that this was all art from one guy, then I'll be fine. Because that would be kind of a cool thing. That I would love to be able to just take all my stuff, all my art, throw it in there and be like, hey, if I... And now, you know, they're also... I guess they also would have to come out and say it's AI, which they did. So... Mm -hmm. But yeah, if I was to get all of my art together, throw it into a, a you know a, a AI program, and be like, okay, I want to know what draw. Like I've never drawn a dog. What? Well, how would a dog look like in my style? Mm -hmm. You know, and then just be like, hey, this is a drawing of a dog I did. It's uh, AI, but it's my it's all my concept art. Right. Sure. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. But I'm I'm going to need more. I'm going to need more than what they're putting out there. Even then, even in the example you give, I'd have to know where the AI is pulling the image of the dog from to know what a dog looks like well, that way. Because if you were, you said in your example, you never no, drew right. a dog. So right. yeah. How would, it, how would it know what a dog looked like? Which if they're pulling a bunch of public domain photographs or something like that, I guess maybe. Yeah. Um, or maybe I took a picture of a dog and put it in there. Yeah. Or even a few pictures of a dog. Yeah. It's one of those things where it, it's the line is so blurry to try to figure out what is an acceptable use of AI and what is not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what they're trying to portray for the series, it's definitely the look they should go for. And AI is unique in creating looks like that. But it, mm -hmm. they'd have to be really, especially with, like you said, with everything going on with the WGA, I know it's not writing, but it, but it's still yeah using AI to you know take money out of people's pockets that could have had that job. Right. Yeah. Again, like I said, there are there are definite there are definite exceptions that I am more than willing to accept. Right. I I, st I still think them making the opening sequence look like AI art, considering everything that's going on is in bad taste yeah yeah at the end of the day even if they did ethically source everything if they paid everyone who needs to be paid they did it the right way just to even be even if it, they didn't use ai at all and they had hired an artist to draw every one of those frames to look like it was using ai like you said that's still in poor taste yeah consider again considering everything that's going on right that's like saying you know what writers I know that you're striking against our use of AI, but how about we just do the opening sequence in AI, which has nothing to do with writing? Huh? <laughs> Poor taste. Yeah. So yeah, so that's the, I definitely, 
came in here with a chip on my shoulder. It's a chip deserved. <laughs> I mean, you you had said something about maybe talking about this in the podcast, and I literally took time out of my day to watch that episode because I wasn't going to watch it until tonight. I watched it not knowing that's what was going on. I enjoyed that first episode, but yeah, I oh. mean, if... Yeah, okay. Now, here's the thing. Let's just take out that... Let's just take out that opening sequence. It doesn't sure. exist. That was a great fucking show! Yeah. That was a great show! I hate that they did that! Mm -hmm. I hate that they are taking that away from me. I mean, I'm taking that away from me. Sure. Granted, out of protest. But it's just, like, unnecessary. It was that good... Did you save some money to 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 bring in some of the actors that you did? Is that is that what it was? I, I Disney, you don't you don't need to save that much money. You I mean, not saying that doing it would be right either way, but did they do it to save money, or did they do it because they were looking for a particular visual style, and it's something no. that's pretty unique to AI? Which, I mean, it, if it was, I mean, I'm not saying it was the right move. It did work. Like if it if not for the fact that AI was the wrong move, this the visual style and what they were trying to portray for the series, it did work. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that they were trying to save money. It could have just been an artistic decision. But and, you still need to be paying will, somebody. Yeah, and I will also say that again, if they used an artist's art again. <sighs> Again, kind of in poor taste, given everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but that's also, like you said, it's an ethical use of AI. Yeah. So, so. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> now, and I don't even think the writers are saying that we shouldn't use AI. Yeah. They just don't want us to use it. They don't want them to use AI to write their scripts or even, you know, have anything to do with the writing table. It, it is a great tool. AI is a great tool. Right. But it's also. I don't want to say it's dangerous, but it's going to, you know, fuck around and hurt the industry. Yeah. But the show is good. If you're going to use it, you're going to have to be very careful how you use it. Yes. Agreed. Again, just Marvel, just come out. Just tell me that you used, tell me that you used your, uh, you, you know, one artist to do this. You know, let me know. Let me know. Let me find that guy's name again. Let me know that Felix Soletic. That's all his art. Let me know that. Let me know that that's all his art. Mm -hmm. that you pumped into an AI and did this, please. That'd be great. Yeah. And it's not like we're going to be the only people asking either. Oh, they're, oh, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter's Twitter's kind of blowing up about it. Well, they are. Uh, they are blowing up about someone being removed from the show, but also the AI. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's like they're they're proud of it. They're proud of their opening sequence. The create the creative team. I mean it looks cool. If they used ethically if they ethically used AI, they should be proud of it. Again, but again, if they I, didn't I they no, they should be they should be ashamed of themselves. Right. And and you know what, this guy right here at the Rocha says he says, I think Marvel's intention was to un unsettle you by giving you hyper stylized fake versions of real things to subtly convey the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. However, please tell me that you used it ethically. Yeah, it's a big ass. However. Yeah. Come out and it's tell me. It's a huge ass butt. Let me tell you. you huge ass butt. That's a big old butt. <laughs> big old fat butt. Man. Oh, now I'm seeing a video of the, the Marvel Avengers campus. They make that Nick Fury actor come out there. Full, long sleeves, pants, trench coat, all black, knit wool cap, full beard. This poor man. Ooh. How is he not sweating through everything? They, they limit the actors like that who have suits like that. They limit the amount of time oh, that got they're to. out there. He can't even fit a fan in that. Yeah, they they definitely have twice as many handlers as other characters to make sure they don't get caught up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Either way, they're I, not they're not paying them enough. Yeah. Ah! So mad. So mad. I, I really I re you know what? 
I really, really hope that they they come out with some more info about the use of fucking AI, or or even better, change it. If they change the opening sequence, cool. Yeah, will they? <laughs> that's an no. awful. No, that's an awful lot of work. <laughs> if anything, I'd put my money on. They've already made all the title sequences, and that they are all different, and they've all used AI. A different title sequence for each episode that have all used AI to generate. Because if you're using AI to generate, how quick is it to do one for each episode? And how long would it take one person to go, how cool would it be if we had a different one for each episode? Right. That's what I'd put my money on, is that they've already made them all. They're not going to change them. They're all different, and they were all made with AI. Oh, well, that's even a bigger slap in the face, really. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's and, and I, I and I'm not even bashing on the people defending it. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Ba- I'm not bashing them because they're they're obviously they're not seeing the bigger picture, or they right. don't care about the bigger picture. Which again, that's fine. It's that's not their fine. job. Right. Exactly. Now, if it was my job. Like, let's just say I was an artist that worked for Disney. Oh, wait, no, they screw their artists over all the time. Um, <laughs> hmm. Artists that work for Marvel? I mean... Probably, probably not that much better. Some, I mean, some of them... I mean, you know, Jack Kirby got... Mm. Oh, oh. Steve Dick... Uh-uh. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, at least there's Stan Lee. He made it all the way, you know, to old age. It's not like he got taken advantage. <laughs> I mean, at least it wasn't by Marvel. Woo! There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> we got there. Oh, God. Uh, but it also kind of brings up my, my thing about Thor Love and Thunder. Again, I'm not sure. I, I'd have to go back and check. I mean, there's no way they didn't. But when they used art straight from the comics that inspired that movie, like the big giant dragon thing, mm-hmm. that was straight out of the comics. If they didn't credit the artist for that, yeah, I'm pissed about that too. Right. But I, I'm not sure if they did or not. Right. Even then, though... I still think it's shitty that they just took it. I mean, it's not even it's not even like a interpretation. It is it looks like it's straight out of the comic. It's same pose, same wounds, everything. It's like, ugh. ugh. I'm not sure if I've talked about this on the podcast. I know I've talked about it to other people. But when I went and saw the Mario movie when it came out, there's a lot of old school video game music they use in the movie. And when you get to the credits where they're crediting all the the writers and stuff for the songs, all their pop songs and whatnot that were used in the movie were credited, but the video game music is not. Yeah. Like, especially, specifically, you've got, like, the DK rap. Yep. um, And they say, they're like, DK rap in the credits. It's there and just says Nintendo of America or Nintendo Entertainment Company or whatever it is. They just credit Nintendo. Grant Kirkhope gets no fucking love for writing that fucking song. Yep. And um, that's true of all the video and then, game music. And, and then, another big slap in the face, when they talked to Seth uh, Seth Rogen about it, he said that the rap sucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which the uh, guy who he wrote also, it was... He also, it's in there because Seth Rogen was like, I, I want it in there. Like, it sucks, but I want it in there. Right, right. Like, it's in there because Seth Rogen said... If I'm going to be Donkey Kong, there has to be the DK rap. Man, just how hard is it to credit somebody? I don't know, man. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it should be that hard. Look, we all know you're not going to pay them either way. At least put their mm-hmm. fucking name on it. It's exhausting. It's not, we're not, it's not even asking that much. It's not no. asking that much. Mm-mm. And you can't tell me, you can't tell me that you don't have animators that could make an opening sequence that looks like AI. Yeah. Or at least, been a- like we said, hire a bunch of animators, credit them all, pay them all, have them draw a bunch of art, and then feed that into the AI. Yeah. Like, if you really want to use the AI, fine. But, yeah. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on 
because I think we've said everything we're going to say about this. Whereas we disapprove unless you did it ethically, in which case we disapprove until you prove that you've done it ethically. <laughs> so did you see the trailer for Craven the Hunter? I did. Do you have feelings about the trailer? Well, I mean, Aaron Taylor Johnson gives me feelings. <laughs> um, but I will say that I don't hate it. Right. But I also didn't hate Morbius when I saw the trailer for it. Right. I don't like how they are making him an anti-hero. Right. I think that's dumb. And I... Look, this is what I would have done, all right? I would have... And I don't know if someone's done this, but I know my original plan to bring Craven in would have been Spider-Man 3, and he came into town hunting the lizard, right? Right. Because liz lizards run around town... Hunting the hunting the lizard. So Spider Man has been tracking down the lizard try because he's he knows he's Kurt Connors. So he's trying to save him. But now that Craven's there, he has to fight Craven to keep the, him from killing the lizard, and he has to keep the lizard from killing other people and save the lizard. So, tell me that would have been a great story. It's what they're doing but for the fucking video game. That well, I heard that Craven uh, in the video game was coming in and just hunting down all of the villains. I mean, probably. But I mean, like, the the big one they showed in the trailer was the lizard. Oh, was it? Yeah. How did I miss that? But anyways, I, and, and I'm fine. I'm fine saying that because I've gone on record before that that was my plan for Spider-Man 3. So I'm mm -hmm. good. Yes. I'm happy that they stole my idea. Good yes. times. But that's what they should have done. That's what they should have done. Instead, they just made him the fucking Punisher. <laughs> They made You're him the right. Punisher, except he talks to animals. That's what it is. It's if Punisher was Dr. Doolittle. Oh my god, rated R Beastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's it, it being a rated R movie, I bet I still will go through that whole movie with nary, nary a boob. No, there will be no boob. We'll get butt. I think we'll get butt. Mm -hmm. It'll be Craven's. Modoc butt. Modoc butt. Oh, uh, Modoc. <laughs> He's just gonna float by. <laughs> I think Modoc butt should be in every Marvel movie from now on. From now on. Just make a part on. of that, that title sequence where like they're going through the Marvel logo and showing scenes from like all the different movies. <laughs> just like one just of a Modoc butt. <laughs> bet bet it won't be in the Deadpool movie. <laughs> in the opening sequence, I bet you it's in the opening sequence. Uh Man, I'm tempted to take that bet. <laughs> I'm tempted. You're tempted not to because you, you're like, they might. They might fucking. Yeah. That's some uh, fuck around and find out shit right there. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, if, if, if the Deadpool guys are listening right now, which I know you're not. Please, please <laughs> squeeze Modoc Pushy into the Mo Marvel opening sequence. Please. <laughs> oh, man. But I just don't understand Sony and what they're doing with this Sinister Six and their yeah. Spider Man properties. I don't understand how they can be fucking it up so bad. And what and and then still and then doing the animation so right yeah it's like you're doing the animation so well but then you turn around and do this shit well I and I get I get the separation with that because like they're just they're just a producer handing it to different studios different studios are handing it differently fine why are you still still handling handing that studio your Sinister Six yeah. No, I don't. I don't understand what their fucking obsession with the Sinister Six is. What is their obsession? I I understand the move of Sinister Six personally. Like, if I were in Sony's shoes, and I had the Spider-Man license, I don't want to make a Spider-Man movie because the moment they make a Spider-Man that's not the Spider-Man that's connected to the MCU, they have separated themselves. As long as they're making their own little Sinister Six over here and Tom Holland is over there playing in the MCU, at any point in time, they can bring Spider-Man over and they're connected. If they make their own Spider-Man, they're disconnected. 
they're not making the money it's it's a business decision i get it it's smart but you look at the reception of venom you look at the reception of of carnage you look at the reception of morbius which (laughs) they really showed that they don't know what the reception of morbius was when they did the re-release because a bunch of people were going by buying tickets to Morbius, ironically. And they were like, wait, this movie's making money. Maybe they like it. Fucking open your fucking eyes. Whatever. I get that you're making money, right? But that doesn't mean this is what the people want. You could make more money if you make what the people want. Yes, absolutely. But you get the reception of all those movies and you just stay the course in the way you make Craven. It, it blows my fucking mind. I don't get it, man. I honestly don't. I wish I could tell you. They are leaning into it, and there's no need for it. I think that my big problem, I don't even want to say problem, I'm kind of weirded out by it. They've been obsessed with bringing the Sinister Six into the Spider-Man property since The Amazing Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck, why are you fighting this hard to bring the Sinister Six in? It's like, obviously, you know, you would make a way more money if you just brought in Miles. Yeah. It's like, don't worry about the Sinister Six. It, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of themselves. Like, if you hadn't killed fucking Mysterio, he could have been one of them. Yeah. Let, let that shit build itself. Mm-hmm. Don't force it. Don't fucking force it. Right. But no, I think what it is is they want their Sinister Six to be fucking anti-heroes kind of good guys they want them to be their suicide squad which is a terrible idea terrible idea the the whole point of all the, almost i could be misstepping here i could be like not taking something into account but i feel like every member of the sinister six was a foil to spider-man in some way mm-hmm. it's, it was perfect that way and Okay, like you were saying, let it happen naturally, right? You had Mysterio. Mysterio could have been one of them. Definitely a foil to Spider-Man, especially Tom Holland's Spider-Man. You had Vulture. The Vulture, too. Vulture's great. And then you went ahead and teased at the Scorpion with Vulture. You had uh, Vulture talking to the Scorpion. You could have let that shit happen. What the fuck is Scorpion? You did that little tease, and then you're just like, no, throw him in the bin. We're going to take Vulture, and for some reason, he hopped universes, and he's over with Morbius now. Oh, and I think that's their problem, too, is they are looking at it too separated. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they are looking at, you know, Tom Holland being in this universe, but then they're like, well, we have to make our own universe, so we like the, we like the uh, Vulture, so we're moving him over. And it's like, okay, all right. Are are you going to put Miles in that universe? Right. It needs a Spider-Man. I don't understand what you're doing right now. Right. And then you're making them all hate Peter for some reason. <laughs> right. Right. Vulture, who actually had a bit of a redemption arc. Yeah. And it's like, no, I hate I hate Peter Parker. Uh-huh. Uh. And then Venom just sees Tom Holland on a TV and goes, I need to eat that kid. I, I need to eat that kid. Like, for no reason. I'm kind of feeling like <laughs> like the way they're doing it is if Morbius or Craven ever run into Spider-Man, they're going to be like, yeah, we're, we're edgy anti-heroes and we're saving people from evil. Fuck Spider-Man. It's like, what? <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Why, why do you hate Spider-Man? <laughs> it's like, he, he's technically, I mean, wait, why don't you wait to hate Spider-Man until he like uh, fucks up your day when you're trying to kill a bad guy? Yeah. Then then hate Spider Man. Yeah. I mean that's what they did with the Punisher, and that's obviously what they're making Craven. Yes. <sighs> Fucking Sony. Very Very Fucking much. Sony. And like like we've already said a hundred times, their animated stuff, like the Spider Verse, fucking amazing. The video games, fucking amazing. Why? How can you do these things so well and then just be so tone deaf, so blind? to what the fans want over here with your live action Sinister Six that you're trying to build. Mm-hmm. Makes no goddamn sense. None. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I, it's like, who is directing them? Who? I mean, I, is it 
wait, no, that's I think that's the Star Wars person. Or yeah, who's Kathleen Kennedy? Is that the Star Wars person? Come on, come on, be right. I think it's I, I'm I'm thinking it's it's the Sony person, but I'm betting it's Star Wars. It is Star Wars. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, Kathleen Kennedy was a producer on E.T., the extraterrestrial. Oh. Hmm. Holy Neat. shit, she's 70? She looks amazing for 70. <laughs> oh my god. Go, Kathleen. Yeah. Head of Sony Pictures. Christine Belson? No, that's animation. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> You're giving me every everything but. Tony, what? That's not. Hmm. Head of... Spider Man movies in Sony. I swear to God, I'm going to throw this whole computer out. <laughs> who was, I, like, seriously, who was the lady that was beside Kevin Feige, like, talking about the relationship between Marvel and the Sony Spider Man, and he's just sitting there all super un- uncomfortable? I'm not sure. That? I do. Kevin Feige. Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, oh, wait. I think I'm getting it. Spider Man. Kevin Feige. No, Kevin. Kevin, damn it. Kevin. I fucking hate you. Amy Pascal. <laughs> That's who it is. That's who it was. Yeah, is it Amy Pascal? That's doing it. She is a film producer. Does she have anything to do with the Spider Verse movies? She does. I don't. I don't get it. But it's not like she's the director. She's the producer. That's I mean, the the producer is pretty much the people putting the money up and saying, hey, this is this is kind of how things go. Yeah, but all she's doing is paying people and then other people are making the actual creative decisions. It's true. Oh. <laughs> So she did. <laughs> mm-hmm. In 2000 in 2018, mm-hmm. she produced she produced Venom, mm-hmm. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, mm-hmm. and The Girl in the Spider's Web. I haven't seen that Spider-Man movie yet. It, no, me either. Huh, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me. It's like I'm looking at it as like Venom, The Girl in the Spider's Web. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. It's like, <laughs> is it is it Mayday Parker? Is that what we're talking about? It's like, no, it's 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 that movie series. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm dumb. I, that was <laughs> I, I thought that was way too funny. It was way funnier than it should have been. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Ugh. All right. I'm, I put okay. in I put in Amy Pascal. Just to uh-huh. kind of see some of the stuff that you're looking at. And the second result under Amy Pascal is how do I contact Amy Pascal? <laughs> People are trying to find out, man. People are trying to find out. Uh, all right. Look, as long as we're going to be talking about bad decisions that production companies are making. I saw the photos of the new live action avatar for some of the characters Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I got really excited and I'm like Mm -hmm. maybe this new live action adaptation of Avatar is going to be really good this is going to be way better than those uh, Shyamalan movies and then right after that oh come on please oh no I saw oh no (laughs) well it's going to take us a long way to get there but yeah so Immediately <laughs> after that, I saw photos of the characters for the live ad- action adaptation of One Piece for Netflix, which immediately reminded me of all these live action anime adaptations that Netflix has been doing. And I realized that Avatar is another one of them. Yeah. And that immediately made me not excited. Yeah. Have you seen have you any seen of these that? adaptations? Yeah. <laughs> which ones have, have you, you watched? Seen- have you seen have you well, hold on have you seen the the little teaser trailer for one piece yes yeah <laughs> it um, doesn't I have saw, me helpful i saw cowboy bebop a controversial opinion i didn't think cowboy bebop was all that bad i actually I I kind of i enjoyed that's it why, but that's like, why i said it first 
Yeah, but I feel like it might be the exception. And even then, while I did enjoy it, I don't think it was great. Like, I wasn't like, oh my god, they did such a good job. Like, it was it was passable. Yep. And I saw a little bit of the white Death Note. Oof. There's nothing good to say about the Death Note adaptation. No. What else was there? Mm, come on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to look up what they did just so I can remember because... Because they're that forgettable. Every, yeah. There was a really, really bad one that they... Did they... Oh, wait. Are they doing Bleach? Or did they do Bleach? Um, here's the thing. I don't know which ones were Netflix adaptations and which ones weren't because I've just kind of avoided uh, them all. But I knew Bleach was done. I know Veroni Kenshin was done. I know Attack on Titan. Oh, wow. Well, um, that was good, though. Yeah. I heard the live action t- uh, Attack on Titan was good. Then it probably wasn't uh, Netflix. Right. <laughs> um, so, okay. So I looked up on Game Rant, Netflix all live action anime adaptations ranked. Uh huh. So coming in at number nine is The White Death Note. Yep. That was bad. Uh, yeah. That Cowboy Bebop bad. at eight. That, that's sad. Because I, I did, like you said, I, I don't think it should have been that low. It it got a lot of hate on the internet. I don't think it deserved it really all the hate that it got, but like it still wasn't good. Well, I didn't know they did a full Metal Alchemist live action. <sighs> Probably not good either. Probably not. Oh, they did too. <laughs> they did too. Kakaguri? That's the gambling one? Yeah. I did hear about okay. that one. Yeah. I haven't even seen the anime. Yeah, I mean, how how bad could they fuck that up? Oh, don't 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 answer, don't answer. <laughs> um, they yeah, they did bleach. They did bleach. Okay, they did do bleach. Okay, it's got a seventy one percent on Rotten Tomatoes, right? It can't be. Maybe I should go back. I've just like avoided them. Maybe because of Death Note. Maybe I should go back and watch some of these, and maybe um, that will increase my hope for Avatar. Could be number three is Roroni Kenshin. Yeah. That came out in 2012. And then they did a chapter two that came out in 2021, like almost 10 years later. Okay. (laughs) And then they did what? (laughs) Hold on, hold on, hold on. (laughs) So they did three. They did Uh Rorona Kenshin, final chapter, part one, the final in 2021. And then Rorona Kenshin, final chapter, part two, the beginning. So they Tarantinoed that shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So apparently, Roni Kenshin is the shit because it made one, two, and three. That was one of my favorite yeah. animes when I was younger. Maybe I'll go back and watch that live action show. Okay. Well, I, Let me I'm tell looking you something. at it. I'm looking at it. it I'm looks not going to watch it before this episode releases. I'm uh-huh. asking anyone who listens to this episode if it is bad, let me know on Discord or email me, casterskill at gmail.com. Save me from watching it if need be. Because if nobody says anything, I'm going to watch it. If you think it was bad, if you saw it and you were like, no, you're a Rainy Kenshin fan, don't do that to yourself. Let me know. So, should you probably watch... I don't know which one's the first one. Probably the one that's just called Rainy Kenshin. I'll probably just watch it in release order. That's fair. That's fair. That's probably a good idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, no! What? Okay, so... Again, I'm on Screen Rant looking up every Netflix live action anime adaptation in development. And this came out a year ago. Mm -hmm. Pokemon. Netflix is apparently doing a live action Pokemon. I'll believe it when I see it, because they also said that Netflix was going to do a Zelda and that Netflix was going to do a bunch of other Nintendo stuff. So that's fair. I'll believe it when I see it. This list is always already talking about uh, One Piece, too. Yeah. Oh, it's a live-action Pokemon series. God, that's worse. Okay, Avatar The Last Airbender. Sword Art Online? How? <sighs> let's you, hope, you let's hope they... Oh, okay. I'd watch that shit. <laughs> that watch that's, that shit. That's just cheesy enough that I think yes. that it would work. Yeah, yeah, I'd watch that shit. But if they do SA, but let's, let's hope they lean away from some of the more rapey stuff that SAO gets into. Oh, uh, yeah, I I haven't watched too much of it, so I haven't gotten to the the cringe part. Yeah. It gets real bad but in I also, season 2. I, I think I've only seen two episodes and it wasn't even like the beginning. It was like somewhere in the middle. So I I don't know. Wow. But yeah, I think Yu Yu Hakusho would be a good would be a good translation over. 
Yeah, as long as they don't try to take it seriously. If they lean into how silly it is and let it be cheesy. Agreed. Agreed. You know what, Baron? I'm I'm done talking about all these bad studio decisions. You know what? I think I need to relax. I'm going to take a bath with Geeky Clean Bath Products. Oh my god! The Handmade Monthly Dice Set Bath Bomb Subscription Box is the ultimate indulgence for dice enthusiasts and bath lovers alike. Every month, subscribers receive a curated handmade dice bath bomb, each with its own unique scent, color, and set of dice. These bath bombs are carefully crafted with high-quality ingredients, providing a relaxing and exciting soak every time. The colors and scents change each month, so subscribers never know what to expect. From vibrant hues to calming shades, and from sweet and floral fragrances to spicy and invigorating scents, the dice bombs change every month. And of course, the highlight of the subscription box is the different sets of dice. Each month, subscribers receive a new set of dice ready for their next adventure. The Dice Bomb for July is scented with Earl Grey, Lemon, Bergamot, and Soft Florals. The dice inside are green, blue, and yellow swirl. Each bath bomb also comes with a linen dice bag. And don't forget, you get 10% off your subscription or any other order with our link or discount code Guild Decree. All right, Baron, I'm back from my bath. I feel much better. Oh, you smell great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. What? And look at those dice. <laughs> I know. Aren't they awesome? All right. Speaking Freshly of shame. what? Speaking of dice, if you're listening to this episode, you're going to wish you were on our Discord because I warned everybody on our Discord that Free RPG Day is coming up on June 24th, Hell and yeah. this episode will not release until Free RPG Day is already over. So hopefully, oh. you went and got your free RPG stuff. So yeah, tell us what you got. All right. Cool. So I've got the free rpg day.com website up here uh-huh and there's a lot of publishers that are participating this year so starting at paizo we've got a pathfinder second edition adventure called the few flowers more and we have a starfinder adventure called operation seaside park which literally has a roller coaster on the cover which sounds fucking awesome next up we've got whiz kids who are doing a four-player scenario for their uh, their Dungeons & Dragons Onslaught miniature game. And they're doing a promo and paint kit for some of their WizKids figures. So you can get the figure and paint it. Awesome. Let's see. Loke Battle Mats. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's L-O-K-E. Loke Battle Mats is doing a 5e adventure called Heist at the Museum that includes maps, the book, tokens, all kinds of really cool stuff. Goodman Games is doing a Dungeon Crawl Classics adventure called Piercing the Demon's Eye. Wow. Q Workshop, you know, they always got cool stuff. If you're trying to get the Q Workshop stuff, make sure you're one of the first people through the door on Free RPG Day because it's normally not very many that get put in with the kits. But there is... uh, 3d6 elvish dice set (laughs) sounds cool let's see sfg is doing a 5e adventure that is an animal adventure called the faraway sea modifius entertainment has a achung cthulhu adventure called operation kindling oh that doesn't sound that doesn't sound promising (laughs) for characters involved and a Dreams and Machines coloring book. Wonderful. Magpie Games is giving away a Root the Role-Playing Game Quick Start book and Avatar Movers and Shakers Quick Start book and some black and white Tui and La dice from Avatar. And we're not even halfway done here. Jeez. (laughs) Let's see. Next up, we got Renegade Game Studios has a Cobra Con Fusion that looks like it's a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover adventure. Can you say that one more time for me? I, I feel like I feel like that hurt. It's a Cobra Con. So okay. Cobra and Decepticon. Uh-huh. Fusion crossover adventure for the Transformers and G.I. Joe role-playing games. And has the Cobra and Decepticons teaming up. 
against G.I. Joe and the Autobots. Wow. Okay. And a quick adventure for Vampire the Masquerade called A Taste of the Moon. Let's see. Ninth Level Games is doing a level one indie RPG anthology, which brings together choice games from the world of indie RPGs in an annual collection. And they are doing a Mazes Fantasy role playing introductory module. Honestly, I think this this level one indie RPG anthology might be the coolest thing on this list so far. That might be the thing that I'm most wanting to go out and pick up. Always late to the party on these. As soon as I'm get out of work and go to the free RPG day, it's like you're just picking up what's left. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's why I don't do free comic book day either. It's like uh, I'm never going to make it. All right. Next up, we have CMON and Guillotine Press are offering free two scenarios, two free scenarios for Zombie Side Chronicles. Free League is doing a quick start book for Dragon Bane. Okay. Hatchet Board Games and Gigamike. Gigamike. If I'm pronouncing those correctly, has a episodic board game called Critical Foundation. And they are giving you episode zero for free. And apparently the board game is set to be episodic like a TV show ending in a huge season finale. So they're giving you episode zero for free. I'm not even going to pronounce attempt to (laughs) pronounce this one. This is H.Y.M.G.H.O., which is apparently short for him of the ghost. They are giving away a dice set, which looks fucking amazing it comes in a potion tube but apparently each game store is only getting one to give away so uh if you're wanting that make sure you're the first person through the door i I will fight smirk and dagger games is giving away adventure party the role-playing game okay Hmm. i won't go into what everything is because we'd be here all night but make sure you check out the discord and see what some of this stuff is. Oh, you're going to love this. Van Ryder Games. And I'm just going to read it right off the page here. We, we here at Van Ryder Games are excited to be taking part in Free RPG Day pro- by providing this sample chapter of our graphic novel adventure, Lou Guru. Okay. Okay. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Next, we've got Wet Ink Games is giving away a a quick start adventure. So it's quick start rules, six pre-made characters and an adventure for their game. Heckin' good doggos. (laughs) Oh, I know so many people who would want that. Dragon shield is giving away some monster token cards, uh, 12 mini adventures and 12 pocket RPGs. BCW is giving away dice bags and dice trays. And they look halfway decent. They look pretty nice. Edge Studio is giving away an adventure for adventures in Rokugan, Storm Eel's Rest. Rokugan, really? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Pelgrain Press is giving away quick start rules to their game Swords of the Serpentine. And Foam Brain Games is giving away a mini pin uh, of a dragon egg. So, yeah, that's everything that's announced. I'm sure some stores will have some stuff left over from last year that they'll be putting out, too, depending on the store. But, yeah, hopefully, if you're hearing this, you've already gone and gotten your free RPG stuff. If not, maybe sign up for our Discord. That way, next year, you'll get the heads up before it's too late. Also, don't be one of those people who are going in to get free stuff and then selling it. Don't be that. Oh, yeah, don't do that. Don't, Don't do that. I'm letting you right now, if you are that guy, you are not welcome at Caster's Guild. And that's yeah, saying that's something, not. because pretty much everybody's yep. welcome at Caster's Guild. Yeah, we we will straight up accept pirates. Mm-hmm. But, but not not scalpers. Nope. Oh, should that be a, should that be a guild decree? No I scalpers think, allowed? I think we already did no scalpers at one point in time as a guild decree. <laughs> okay, so I'll put, I'll put this in contingency. <laughs> yeah. If we have not made a guild decree that scalpers are not allowed, it is now a guild decree. No scalpers allowed. Which means that at some point I can make another guild decree on contingency. Sure. I'll allow it. So like if like so like if this one if we didn't do the scalpers thing, 
that goes through, and then my other one will go through. I haven't made I haven't made the other one yet, but it's, the option is there. Yes, it's nice to keep those options open. Right, 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 right. We gotta know. We gotta know. All right. So next on the docket, uh, Nintendo just came out with another direct for this month, and they talked about a ton of crap. I'm not even going to mention half of it because it would be an entire podcast if we were to talk about all of it. It was a 40 minute direct and it was chock full of new games. So I'll just go over some of the highlights here. So first up, we got a new DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet called the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. It was broken into two parts. The part one being the teal mask looks like a uh, traditional Japanese festival that you kind of get to play through. Uh, There's some new legendary Pokemons and it comes out fall of this year. And then there's part two, which is the Indigo Disc, which is a whole new academy, which if you've played that game, basically you are a student at an academy. So this is a whole new academy that's like out in the middle of the ocean on a man-made island um, with a whole new adventure and stuff like that involving that academy, a new legendary Pokemon that comes out this winter. And this is just goes back to my Pokemon rants where... I know I should not be excited for these. I know I shouldn't be looking forward to these, but they look so damn cool that like I want to play them and Pokemon will continue to take my money and I'll continue to complain about the product that I get. (laughs) Next on my list, uh, they announced Sonic Superstars, which is a new 2D Sonic game. Oh, Uh, okay, okay. It's the first one in the series to get local co-op so you can play together with your friends and you can play as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or Amy. And that comes out this fall. How long has it been since we've gotten a good 2D Sonic adventure? It depends on who you ask, but Sonic Mania was a 2D Sonic game that was originally made by, was originally fan made. And Sega liked it so much that they actually produced it. And that came out, I don't know, it was still quite a while ago. Yeah, because I know that they were all hot on the uh, 3D stuff there for a while. Yeah, Sonic Media came out in 2017. So it's been a little while, but like that was good. And hopefully, and it was also really well received by fans. So hopefully they've learned some lessons and that's going to be going into this new 2D Sonic game. Okay. This next one I put on this list because I, I specifically think that you might like it, Baron. It's called Myth Force. I hate it. It is a first person, first person fantasy action game with an 80s and 90s Saturday morning cartoon feel. Ah, oh, oh, gross. And it's a uh, roguelike with a uh, four player online co op. <laughs> <laughs> but if you watch the trailer, it seriously does have like a, a He Man dragon. It, it, this looks like, um, Dragon Slayer. Yeah, Dragon Slayer, like, um, oh, but yeah, it does have He Man vibes too. Good call. Yeah. It's oh my li- god. It's literally got like a brass mechanical owl that you can interact with like <laughs> <laughs> it's it is that 80s 90s Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, it's even deal. like cell shaded and, mm-hmm. and, and like it looks like 80s animation. Yep. Like the characters do. That's cute as fuck. They've already got <laughs> shut up. They've already got t-shirts. <laughs> that, that look like 80s t-shirts it's gotta be the, you. Look, if you're trying to make a game that's like 80s cartoons you gotta have merch like that's immediate it's a necessity because the whole point of those cartoons was selling toys and merch you gotta have merch <laughs> <laughs> look is Bro. that you getting ready to vomit or is that you choking on this game's dick well to be fair it could be both <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> All right, so next up on my list was one of the bigger announcements. Um, They are remaking the SNES Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. (laughs) I saw that. Which is, like, fans have been asking for that forever. It's one of the biggest games. People love this fucking game. And they're completely remaking it with, you know, remastered graphics for the Switch. I mean, if you want to play this game, it doesn't look like they're changing a lot about it, just making it better for the Switch. It'd be a good way to experience the game if you've never played it before or if you just want to play it again. And that comes out uh, November 17th. Next up, um, I put this on the list just because I want to give tabletop RPGs and tabletop games love. 
it looks like they are making adaptation of the tabletop game Gloomhaven and putting it on Switch. It is literally just a digital version of the game, just with like animations and stuff. But you are playing with cards just like you would with the tabletop version of the game. And I figure if it does well, we might see other tabletop games converted to the Switch. I think that'd be a really cool way to play them. So I've never played Gloomhaven. So uh, because like I've always looked at those giant boxes and how much they've cost and they've always kind of intimidated me. Yeah, it's a bit much. But But, I mean, then, then again, at the same time, though. You know, I'm looking at $70 price tags for video games now, too. So mm-hmm. it's like, ugh. But honestly, if it's a video game and I've got the computer taking care of a lot of the heavy load of a complicated game like that for me, that's that's a good way to play that game, in my opinion. I mean, you can, you can, you can try to justify it all you want. I can't justify the $70 price tag on a game. <laughs> Oh, not, not justifying the seventy dollars price tag, but oh, just saying oh, okay, like okay. a complicated game like Gloomhaven, not just the price tag, but just how big that box is and how crunchy of a game it seems like it might be to me. Having a computer handle it for me, and I don't think it's going to be seventy dollars. So everybody, just I'm going to cut in here real quick and go back to your previous game. Everybody, you can go to Steam right now and get a demo of Myth Force. Oh, there you go. Right now. Right meow. Right meow. All right, so next up, they announced Pikmin 4. I've never been a Pikmin fan, but I feel like I'd be crucified oh. if I didn't bring up Pikmin. Sorry, I thought you said Pippin 4. I was <laughs> in. <laughs> but it looks like they've added a bunch of new features. Um, it comes out July 21st. The demo is available starting June 28th. And they are also releasing hd versions of pikmin 1 and 2 available for digital download right now it released today as of recording so if you're a pikmin fan you're eating good you can go download the hd versions play through pikmin 1 and 2 you got a demo of the new game you can play in june and the game itself comes out in july next on my list is metal gear solid master collection volume 1 which includes Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. It also includes the two original Metal Gear games made for the MSX2 home computer, and the two Metal Gear games that were made for the NES, and a bunch of other extras like graphic novels and strategy guides, like all included in the bundle. If you're a Metal Gear fan, it sounds like a a must-buy. Maybe not for the Switch, maybe for a different system, but it's coming out. October 24th. Then there was their big, big announcement, the one they ended the Direct with, which is Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which is a new 2D Mario game that includes new power-ups, including the Wonder Flower, and a power-up that turns Mario into an elephant. It's got four-player co-op. You can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, Peach, or Daisy, which, as far as I know, is the first time Daisy's been playable in a mainline Mario game. That comes out October 20th. And it just looks like a trippy version of a 2d mario and the art's very different from any other 2d mario they've done so far so it looks pretty cool a couple throwaways i want to add on to the end here just a couple little things they announced that either didn't pique my interest that much or that i didn't want to spend a lot of time talking on but i feel like they bear mentioning a new princess peach game was announced where you actually play as princess peach no title yet no release date yet they're saying next year and it looks like Princess Peach in a stage performance. There's a Detective Pikachu sequel, Detective Pikachu Returns, which comes out October 6th. Persona 5 Tactics, which is a turn-based Persona game coming out November 17th. There is a Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon remaster in development. It looks like they're just updating the graphics for the Switch, and that's it. And not even that much. I mean, it was on 3DS, so it's going straight from 3DS to Switch. That's just saying that's going to be released next year. No date. The Wave 5 of the Mario Kart DLC came out, so that's going to be new courses. Or it's coming out summer of 2023. Coming out with new courses and three new characters. The big reason I want to bring this up is one of those three characters is Kamek. And I'm a big fan of the little Koopa Wizard Boy, so I will be playing as Kamek on the new Mario Kart DLC. There is a new WarioWare game that is being made for Switch. Looks like it takes full advantage of the Joy-Con controllers. Um, They are really, really pumping out the Mario. Well, I mean, I know it's Wario, but I mean, the Mario franchise stuff. Yeah. And last thing, uh, two new Amiibo for Tears of the Kingdom are coming out. We're getting Zelda and Ganondorf 
in their Tears of the Kingdom versions. And I'm sure that'll unlock new stuff in the Tears of the Kingdom game. I am I am so this this is the old man in me. I, I am I, I have no clue how amiibos work, what they are. Like I thought they were just like little figures, but apparently people can get amiibos that aren't the little figures. If anybody wants to come on our Discord and explain to me how it works, I would love that. <laughs> Let me give you a little short education right here, and, and <laughs> somebody can come on the Discord and give you a more in-depth one. Sure, sure. Amiibos are NFC figures, which I'm sure you're familiar with NFC or near-field near communication. Okay. So they've got little NFC chips in their base. Officially from Nintendo, it's it's mostly just figures. You get a little figure, it's got a little chip in the bottom. When you take that figure, put it on the controller, it usually does something in the game, depending on what the game is. So, for example, in Tears of the Kingdom, you take the figure, you put it on, you get free stuff in the game. Like, they'll give you mushrooms, meat. If it's a Zelda amiibo, you'll get a little chest with some kind of rare-ish or good item in it. Um, And there are some items you can only get from the amiibo. The only ones that aren't figures that I think are official is they came up with a bunch of Animal Crossing ones that were cards because they came out one with like every possible villager for Animal Crossing and you literally bought them as like booster packs. And on the back of the box of cereal when you got a Super Mario cereal, when Odyssey came out, they literally had like an NFC chip in the cardboard of the box. (laughs) And you could you could tap that to get extra coins in Mario Odyssey. That's that's really cool. But unofficially, not made by Nintendo. <laughs> uh, so you, I'm not talking about something I might have, might or might not have. But you can get cards with the same NFC chips in it as the figures. So let's say there are like 20 different Amiibo for Zelda. Rather than buying every single figure, you can just buy a book of the Amiibo cards, which are completely unofficial and scan them into the game and get all the benefits of having those amiibo without having to buy 20 different figures at like $12 a piece. Whoa. And, that, and that book of cards might be like five bucks if you get it from like a drop shipping website like Wish or something like that. <laughs> but I don't, have, I don't have anything like that. Right, if, we, if, if you had something like that. Sure, yeah. Right. I, get all, I get all my amiibos legitimately. Of course, as you should. As you should. <laughs> you know we. You know how we feel about pirates around here. Yo ho. I mean no. <laughs> Yo no. Yo. <laughs> Yo no. <laughs> Yoko no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that shouldn't have been as funny as it was. <laughs> so yeah, that was the Nintendo Direct. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and let me tell you, that's not even half. How dare you? That's not even half. They announced, announced a bunch of other new games and stuff. But, like, a lot of what they announced was, like, cozy games and farming sims, and that's not my deal. Now, someone like you who's a fan of, like, Stardew and stuff like that, you should probably check out some right, of the right. other games. Guilt train. <laughs> yeah, but me, I'm not, a, I'm not a big cozy game farming sim fan they also announced a ton of different jrpgs jerpagas mm-hmm jerpagas wow. i love jerpagas i just didn't want our entire podcast to be the nintendo direct we could have went back to secret invasion <laughs> Jesus, secret invasion <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's okay let's assume that they used ethical Hold on. ai are we, go- are we going back to secret yes. invasion <laughs> going back to secret invasion <laughs> let's assume that because there we didn't actually talk about the show right 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 let's assume they use ethical ai sure 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 what did you actually think about the show other than like it was like, really good like i said it, it, i thought it was really good and I, you know what i'll be completely honest i i've never been a fan of their uh, their spy movies like mm-hmm. i wasn't a fan of the winter, winter soldier. soldier i wasn't a fan of what was the other one there's another one i wasn't a fan of black widow maybe yeah i wasn't really a fan of black widow but i had my issues with that but yeah just basically those i mean i hate to say it the 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 way that they chose to do their earth down to earth movies mm-hmm. just, oh falcon and winter soldier i guess was okay but it didn't it didn't hit it for me 
right. I, I do like the fan service that they threw in there. And that's really what I was kind of hoping for with, with Secret Invasion, is the fan service. But I thought that it was... It's suspenseful, which is what it should be, again, as a f- spy thriller. I thought that they gave some good nods to some other movies. I think that they're already hitting us with some shockers. I didn't expect them to give us that in episode one. Like, I thought we'd get a slow build to some of those. Right. No, yeah, no, I agree. But, and, and, I, and I do like, I mean, you're, if you know anything about Secret Invasion, you already know the scrolls are the bad guys in this. But they're not, though. There's, like, you know, good guys, good scrolls and bad scrolls. Mm-hmm. So it's though I do have my I do have my theory on that, too, by the way. But I, I, I like how the scrolls are not necessarily bad guys, but they actually have good motivations for being the bad guy. Right. So and I, I think we can all agree that that's really cool when they do that, when they give the bad guys a good motivation to be a bad guy. Yeah. So it's like almost like the bad guy's been backed into a corner and this is what they feel they have to do. Yeah. Those are, those are probably my favorite MCU bad guys. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Marvel comics, bad guy for the sake of being a bad guy. Right. Like I'm evil. Why? Because I'm evil. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I don't need a lot of nuance for, you know, Manitar to be, you know, evil. I don't care. Right. Whatever. Um, Bad guys got to be Dr. Doom. No, no. In fact, I'm glad they're not because, you know, the world would be over. So. (laughs) Oh, oh, my God. Wouldn't it be cool if Dr. Doom showed up in this one? That would be something for him to show up in this for them to have left him alone in some of the other properties and to bring him in on Secret Invasion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be something. They could have totally brought him in for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm hmm. A hundred. It would have made a ton of sense. And they didn't even really have to put in his armor. They didn't have. They wouldn't have to do that. At least not yet. No. Yeah, but yeah, I see this going a lot of places. And look, I'm just going to be completely honest right now. Look, I, I'm getting rid of my Disney Plus subscription, but I'm going to keep watching that series. I hear you. So just think what you want about that, because it's a like I said, it's a good story. I like seeing Samuel L. Jackson and shit. I like seeing you know Colby Smulders and shit. I I like seeing these characters that i've seen for years in shit Mm -hmm. i love it i want to see where it's going and you know i'm a sucker for a story so i'm i want i'm going to watch the story right but i'll be damned if i pay for it right in fact in fact just as a just as a fuck you i'm not even going to pay for ahsoka either so fuck you disney i can't say the same because my disney plus subscription comes free with my cell service so it's like I'm technically not paying for it anyway. My cell provider is. The only reason why I'm even going to keep Hulu is because my mom uses it. That's it. Yeah. But I haven't... E- Damn, I haven't watched Hulu in months. There's a new season of Living Penny. I- you should check it out. Oh, is there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll jump on there. It's not I'm bad either. I'm going to be up all night tonight, so... They, uh, they no, really I'm- leaned into some of the sillier stuff this season, so... Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah it was getting kind of serious there for a second. I- I'm glad they're leaning into the silly. Mm-hmm. There's also a new season. It's not all the episodes are up yet, but there's a new season of Always Sunny. If you're an Always Sunny fan, I'm not. No, I don't like it. I've tried. I think I remember having that discussion with you before. Yeah. Well, you know, me and you have never been the uh, why don't you kind of. People, yeah, but, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just I just don't like it. I, I can definitely see the appeal. Sure. I can see how people like it, but it just doesn't click for me. I don't know what it is. I just don't. I just don't like it. I didn't like Trailer Park Boys either. I know that's a, not a good comparison, but that's another big. I wasn't one a fan. That everybody likes. Yeah, I also was not a fan of Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I like oh my god! How have I not brought this up? Well, the, this podcast is almost over, and how have I not brought this up? Fucking Dungeons and Drag Queens. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You almost skipped that for Pride. I know. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a terrible member of the Alphabet Mafia. <laughs> yeah man i'm actually pretty excited about bob the bob the fucking drag queens in that one yeah like okay i don't care what the answer is but i am kind of curious 
were these drag queens Dungeons and Dragons fans who all signed up for this, or did they learn Dungeons and Dragons in order to do this? It from the sounds of it, I think at least one of them learned it for this. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, but like you said, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, 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 I think that the point of them playing this is because they're entertaining as fuck. Yeah, and they're going to be entertaining playing this. Yes. So. I, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to to watch. Hey, whatever comes out of it, whoever watches it is not going to be bored. Correct. There will be no boring segments where we just spend hours looking at stats and combat. Like there, there's no way they will abide those stretches. Like it's it's going to be entertaining from beginning to you end. You know what? I, I have to say this. I think it's going to be very very comparable to the seven. Okay. Did you ever watch the seven? Mm-mm. So it was an all woman group, mm-hmm. and they were just like, and they they play D anD D. These these women play D anD D again. Not taking anything away from the drag queens, they are here because they're fun, right? But they've all played D anD D, but they were fucking they they were rambunctious. Let me tell you. <laughs> but again, immensely entertaining. Right. But, I mean, there was just there's just so much sass. There was. There was uh, there was fan clapping. It's it's crazy. And good but, on uh, good on Brennan for his outfit for what I've seen in the trailers too. Fuck, I I mean I was jealous. I want to, I want to wear that. <laughs> he looked fucking good. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm 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 really again. I, I'm not. I I don't want to. I'm not taking anything away from Critical Role. I I really appreciate their storytelling. I appreciate the group that they have. I appreciate mm-hmm. the the uh, charity that they do everything like that there's just something about dimension 20 man they they have like short episodes that are easily digestible they're funny they come up with some off the wall fucking concepts look it's if you're fun. looking for long form content and an idea of how to play the game critical role is is pretty good for that yeah they actually like dive into the rules and the combat and like dimension 20 they hit you with a quick and they're moving on, which if you're looking for more short form content and just looking to be entertained, you're not looking to know about all the rules and the nuances and stuff like that. It's it's better at doing that. They both have the reason their reasons that they're good. Yes. Agreed. So, yeah, with that, I think I've covered everything I want to cover in this episode. Are you sure we can go back to Secret Invasion? <laughs> You know, it's the thing about Secret Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Join us on our Discord. If there's something we didn't talk about that you were like, man, how could they forget that in this episode? Or maybe there was a game in the Nintendo Act you wanted us to cover or something else. Let us know. We'll talk about it. Even, Whatever it is you want us even, to talk about. Even better. Come and talk to us about Secret Invasion. Yeah, come on an episode. Tell, tell us how we're wrong. Tell us how we're wrong about our opinion about AI. I I want to hear your argument. Yes, I'm not. I'm not even going to be a dick about it. Rick, Rick can back me up. I'm not a dick in arguments Mm-mm. until you're a dick in arguments. So just yeah. come in until you come and tell me your opinion, and then we could you know suss it out. I will at least hear you out. Yeah, absolutely. Email us at casterskill at gmail dot com. Let us know what's going on. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Let us know when you can come on an episode on an episode on a Wednesday night. Join us in the Discord. That's where all the fun stuff is happening. And we will see you in the next one. Bye bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.